Hi everyone, Dr. Mac with another video today. This video is for all the people who keep messaging and asking for tips and tricks on crown preparation. When people fail in crown preparation task, we need to understand why they're failing in the first place. And majority of the time I see the errors and these are basic errors that people are making. I have a detailed online masterclass now that you can join from anywhere around the globe at the comfort of your home, having a 24 hours access to the videos, learning the course content with 14 days access. That's going to be a massive thing for you to learn and to be able to improve your work if you're looking for crown prep help. I will put the details of the description down below. But the two main errors that I've seen that people struggle with crown preparation and you want to improve is you work on these two things. First thing, don't rely too much on the putty. A putty is not a very reliable tool. I have a detailed video on my YouTube channel. It was one of the first few videos I posted how to make a good putty. Go and watch that video. If you know how to make a good putty, that makes your life so much easy. But at the same time, we can't rely on the putty. If you rely too much on the putty, the problem is that the putty can bend. Your technique can vary. If your technique's really good, you don't know how accurate your technique is. So what happens is that we do the crown prep based on the putty. All the technique is done based on the putty. And now what happens when you at the end, when you start checking your work, you check based on the putty. But the problem is, if your putty was not accurate, what happens now? What happens now? The, what happens now is that you basically relied only on non-reliable stuff. And if a putty bends, your measurements completely go wrong. And I see all the time that people are doing good crown preps and the measurement is wrong and I'm like, it's a straight fail. So you cannot pass it. That's the problem. So do not rely 100% on the putty. Please rely on depth groove and your tooth structure because your tooth structure never lies. If your depth grooves were really good and nicely done, then basically you have a very reliable feature in which you're relying on and you'll never go wrong. Second thing, is people don't work on indirect vision. Majority of the time, major undercuts and problems because they can't still do the lingual or the palatal. They can't do the lingual or palatal, work on your indirect vision. And the best way I always do is take one tooth and start drilling from palatal, go all the way to buckle. Drill three teeth, start from lingual, go all the way to buckle. Practice so much on the lingual, drill three, four teeth, and you'll be a pro at it. But if you don't work on your indirect vision, no matter what you do, you'll keep on getting undercuts. Your refinements will be wrong. And at the end of the day, one thing which is very important for everyone to understand is tooth takes time. Your hand skills take time. You can't expect everything to be accurate and you can get everything the first day. Hand skills take time. Try to develop your hand skills. Try to work on your hand skills. I will show you two assessments if I can in this video and you will have an idea what I'm talking about when I say people rely too much on the putty, people rely too much on um, putty guide rather than the tooth being their guide with the depth reduction groove and everything goes wrong. Half reduction is completely wrong, half is right. And based on that, they under prep, so they're already in unsatisfactory and the worst bit you can do. At the same time, all the undercuts and linguals because they haven't refined their hand skills and develop the indirect vision. So hope this is helpful. If you're interested in joining the online masterclass for my crown preparation task, I'll put the link below. You can get 14 days access, you get all the videos and unlimited times you can watch the videos and correct your techniques. Because I always say that it's not about how many crown preps you do, 
It's out about if you've done it the right way because the right techniques make a lot of difference. All right, look at the crown paper. What's the first thing you notice? What's the first thing you notice is this is thicker on the top, it's thinner on the bottom. What does this suggest to you? This suggests to you there's a clear undercut. What's the definition of an undercut? Area below the maximum convexity is the true definition of an undercut, right? Maximum convexity and then that's your undercut right there. Can you see there's a clear shadow here? That's your undercut right there. So this, as soon as I see someone's palatal reduction and because this is all done in indirect vision and it, this is this rough and they have two undercuts there, would this suggest to you that you're still not comfortable in indirect vision? That means I want you to practice more on indirect vision. The way to do that is take one tooth, take the same tooth, drill it all the way from palatal all the way to buckle so the tooth is completely gone. Do three of those and then you automatically will be better. I can guarantee you that this prep was done on the influence of using a putty and not a depth groove because I feel like you've relied so much on the putty that the whole measurements are gone wrong. Review the video again and the importance of depth reduction. Why is it important? Why do I keep saying a tooth structure never lies? A putty is not an accurate tool. Look at this, divide the prep. Look at the reduction here. 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 Can you see there's a difference? Can you start to see the difference? This side is less, this side is more. This side is coming to here and this side is coming to here. That means that was the side you were covering the putty and you were focusing so much on the putty that your measurement is completely wrong on this side and right on one side or completely opposite, white or vice versa. It's not matching. Can you see the difference? Look at the margin here. Look at the margin here. Can you guarantee me that you have a 1.2 here? How about here? Do you think it's 1.2? Because I'm gonna fail you here right away. So again, you're reliant too much on the putty. Notice here, uh, not a bad attempt, but again, we have fallen into the trap of assessing too much with the putty. That's what I see. If you notice, if I divide the tooth into half like this, and if you cover one half, and just focus on this half here, you'll notice the amount of reduction here and the amount of reduction here. Very minimal reduction in this side here. What do you think is happening here? Because this side was completely covered by putty and this side was not. So that's what generally happened and that's why it's so much important to rely on the tooth structure and have good depth measurements rather than just relying on the putty. So assess the measurements, but at the same time assess symmetrical prep. That is number one. If I go to the second photo, which is this one, the other area that you'll be able to assess is a lot of shadowing. Now, when you get a lot of shadowing around the margin, especially in this margin here, this suggests that you have an undercut running through. Now, whenever you have a deep shadow like that, there's a high chance that you have an undercut. So maybe your bar placement was not correct. Another thing which is very visible, the margin is less than 1.2 here. So the, as,